everybody, it's Holly here today with a new video for Marka Pop. And today we're going to be making a fun card using a new product from Waffle Flowers called Bear and Bird. This is an adorable new stamp set, and I'm going to be starting out with a piece of Tim Holtz watercolor cardstock. And I'm using the smooth side with some tumbled glass distress ink and salty ocean distress ink. And all I'm doing is laying down the tumbled glass first, and then I'm laying down the salty ocean, and I'm spritzing it with some water and picking it up with a paper towel. This is pretty standard um, that I do in most of my videos. So then I'm going to use the Mini Misty. I'm going to put the images into the Mini Misty. And I'm going to figure out where I want them to go for my layout. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp them with some Versamark ink. And I'm just stamping it kind of lightly because I am going to die cut these images out and put them over the background so you won't really see that. So I'm going to take another piece of Distress ink and I'm going to go ahead and re-stamp those images again using some Versamark ink. And then once I have the images all stamped where I want them, I'm going to go ahead and take that out and let that dry for just a second. And then I'm going to color the images in with my distress markers. And I'm going to go ahead and pull the color out with a wet paintbrush. And what I like to do is just draw a thin line with the marker or however thick you want. And then you have to work kind of fast so the color doesn't set. And then take a wet paintbrush and I kind of go up into where the color is so that it pulls out a little bit into it. And I really like the look of the distress markers um, when you're using them to kind of give a vintage look to an image. And I'll have the list of all the markers I use down below in the description box. So I'm just starting out by giving each image um, one layer of the distress marker and then going over it with the paintbrush. And then once that dries, I go back in and add a second layer to a couple of the images like the bird and the bear. And what you want to do, distress things work better when they can layer, so you want to let the first layer dry and then go back over again with the second layer. If you just keep building up the distress ink on a wet piece of paper or your wet image, it doesn't really give you that layer build that you're looking for. So on these smaller images, I'm just adding a tiny bit of the marker and then just going in with a smaller paintbrush and doing the same thing that I did on the bear. And I'm using the same colors throughout. Um, for the flowers as well as the little bouquet the bear is going to hold. I'm trying to keep all the flowers the same. So I'm just going to keep doing that and then just keep using the paintbrush. And then once that's all complete, I'll be back and we'll move on to the next step.
now the images are all finished, I'm going to go ahead and heat set that with my heat tool. Then I'm going to use my Big Shot machine. I'm going to use the coordinating die cuts to cut the images out. Now I'm going back to that first panel that I created and I'm taking a wet paintbrush and I'm coloring in the little bobbles that aren't going to be die cut. And then I'm going to lift that color up with a paper towel. And then I'm going to go back over it with the Spice Marmalade marker. And what that did was just take the blue off the background and left it white so that I could put the orange on and it doesn't have such a... Uh, it doesn't discolor the orange really. It makes a pop like a fresh orange. Since a distress color can be lifted with water, this is the best way to do it. So then I'm going to go ahead and create a A2 size card base out of a piece of 110 pound solar, you know, solar white card stock. I'm going to go ahead and get that folded up. I'm going to add some heavy duty adhesive to the back of the watercolor panel. Now, if I were to do this again, I would go ahead and double stamp that original impression that I put. Um, on that blue background because I wasn't aware that some of the images the lines were going to be showing so I didn't do them as dark as I should have so I had to go back over with a marker but if I did it again I would definitely double stamp that and make sure that that original image is just as dark as the ones that I colored. So once I have the adhesive on I'm going to go ahead and adhere that to the front of the card base and any kind of adhesive would work here. You just want something strong because it is a watercolor panel and it did kind of bend a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and take the images and add some adhesive to the back of those. And this bear is really fun because the die actually cuts the arms out so you can stick stuff in his arms like he's holding it. And there's several items in the stamp set as well. So I'm going to go ahead and lay the images over the area that I had pre-stamped. So that was also a guide as to where I want the images to be. And the images do have a tiny white border, but then a few of the images, like the little dots within the flowers, um, stick are showing through. They didn't get die cut. So that's why you want to make sure your impression is nice and dark. So I'm just going to use some liquid glue to put all those pieces down. This is a little time consuming. Um, when you do use the die cuts, the die cuts don't cut those arches of flowers. They don't come out in one panel. It's actually everything is a separate individual die. Which is good because you could use those to make a wreath or um, kind of go the whole way across the cardstock or however, but you can extend out the leaves by because they're cut separately. So I'm going to go ahead and finish um, adhering all the images to the front of the card. And then once I have everything where I want it to be, I'm going to go back over those little orange dots in between the leaves and brighten them up and then like I said I'm going to go over with a little marker to make sure everything looks good. And I do go back over the orange dots with a little teeny tiny paintbrush as well to kind of smooth that color out so that it blends in with the rest of the coloring I did. And then I'm going to take the little banner that we die cut and colored earlier. I didn't stamp the sentiment in the center because I wasn't sure what I wanted to use. So I'm going to go ahead and use the negative piece of that from when I die cut it and put that back into the Misty. And I'm going to use the word thanks from the stamp set and it fits right in there perfectly. And then once I have that all stamped, I'm going to go ahead and adhere that across the bottom of the bear using some foam on the edges and then just some adhesive across the top. The only thing on the card stock that's, or the card panel that's popped up is just the bear. And then once I've got the bear, or the, I'm sorry, the banner down where I want it to be, I'm going to go ahead and add some sparkling clear sequins because you know I can't have a card without sparkling clear sequins. <laughs> and I'm just going to use some uh, Ranger Multimedia Matte to adhere those. And I'm using the Pretty Pink Posh uh, mix in the uh, cup sequins. So once I figure out my sequin placement, I'm going to go ahead and get all those down. And then that pretty much completes my card for today. There's no extra sparkle or anything on the card. I really like the way the vintage watercolor looks on this. This is a great set to have. Have a great week, and I will see you guys soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.